May you please join us in the call of worship. This is the Lord's day, the day of wonder and grace. This is the day to worship the Be one who called us here. This is the Lord's day, the day we are giving joy and peace. This is the day promised to us, the day of healing and No. This, this is, is the Lord's day, day and it comes just in time. time. Some thank the Lord for friends and home, for mercies sure and sweet. But I would praise Him for His grace. In prayer I would repeat. Thank church family. Um, this is our time when we reconnect and um, for those of us here we can look around see who holds up a heart and if you don't have a heart raise your hand. I mean y'all like have a heart but yeah shades of Wizard of Oz. Okay oh well you can do that Peggy see see how smart Peggy is we'll just improvise here. It's the Rona, we're used to improvising, so it's fine. Um, so welcome to Church for the Highlands, those of you who are here, and for those of you worshiping from home, um, from different states, from different parts of our country, from Bossier City, from Shreveport, we're all included here. Um, but send up a heart if you have a, got a new puppy this week. little bulldog in the family. I'm excited about Goliath to see his exploits on Facebook. Send up a heart if you want a new puppy but did not get one this week. Maybe Christmas. We can always hope, right? Um, send up a heart if you are glad that this is the day that the Lord has made and you're just going to rejoice in it. Whether you feel like it or not, it always helps us, right? Remain positive. Send up a heart if you can use an hour of encouragement that everything is going to be all right eventually. <laughs> yes, we're for sure about that. Um, send up a heart if your Thanksgiving is going to look a little different this year. But send up a heart if you have plenty to be thankful for if you just really look. Yeah, things are going to be different for us all but we can always rejoice in the steadfast love of the Lord as we studied in Sunday school in Psalm 100. We praise God because God is God and because God is good. And we will continue to raise our voices in praise. Um, now with Bill, welcome again.
It is time to be thankful. And uh, right on cue with our song, what are you thankful for today? How has God blessed you this week? Uh, Obviously, puppy dogs are a blessing. Yes. Can be. Should be. I think they are. Yeah. Jack is home from college. Yes. That's something to celebrate, be thankful for. Good. What's that? Another day, yes. I, I am thankful that our Amen Corner has uh, returned. So uh, I've, I've already uh, given him a little uh, uh, instruction. He's got to boom a little extra loud in this big cavern, but I think he can do it. I think he's up to it. So we're glad you're with us. There we go. <laughs> All right. We had a good youth group in the gym this morning, and I think our Sunday school classes are uh, meeting in the conference room. So we are moving forward with Sunday school, and uh, we. I do believe, Jenny, things will get better. We just have to be patient. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Uh, but be careful in the meantime. But we can be careful and be thankful. So, And I am thankful for our church. Um, we've got a nice little smattering today of who we are at Church for the Highlands. Many are still online at home. Uh, but we are grateful for those who can, who can come in person. So we're going to celebrate uh, with our litany of unity and our prayer uh, our candle uh, that we uh, that we light each week, celebrating our diversity. All right, please join me. We light this candle to celebrate the inherent worth and dignity of every person and to share that love which is ultimately beyond even our cherished reason, that love which unites us. bow for the prayer for for illumination. Living God, help us so to hear your word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow your way in all faithfulness, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Amen. Amen. I'll now be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 7, chapter 8 verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. 
You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of our Lord. Good morning, everybody. At this time, I want to invite you to... Recite the Apostles' Creed with me, which you will find here on the screen. And actually, I want to ask you to stand for this part, just to get your blood flowing a little bit. Don't worry, we're not going to do anything Pentecostal today, unless you just want to. Um, thanks, Bill. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. There's a quote on the front of the bulletin by uh, Thomas Keating that reminds us about silent prayer and what silent prayer is really all about. God's first language is silence. You ever thought about that? God's first language is silence. Everything else is a translation. So let us go to God in this time of silence and allow ourselves to hear God speak to us in the midst of it. And now let us pray in the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I'll be reading from uh, Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the word, world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of these of the least who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they, will also, then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous until unto eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. As the shepherd who cares for the flock, O God, you guide all things through Jesus, whom you have exalted over all creation as king. Hear the prayers we offer in his name, for the creation he cherished, and that you entrust to us. You are invited to say the name of someone who needs prayer. Look upon your people who rejoice in your justice and mercy, and grant that the prayers we make may reveal Christ's reign in our time. Amen. How many of you already have a plan for your Thanksgiving meal this week? Okay, some real slackers in here. Um, just a few hands went up. Uh, it, it's something that really requires us to have a plan, right? Especially if we are making the meal. Uh, though I've only been the beneficiary of eating a Thanksgiving meal, I'm always in awe of the uh, amount of planning and preparation that goes into it. I mean, it's, it's difficult for me to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, just to try to think through, okay, I gotta get the peanut butter out, then I gotta find the jelly, then I gotta get a knife, I gotta go through all these steps. I mean, it's difficult. But especially making a Thanksgiving meal. I've noticed a number of social media posts this past week uh, promoting how to, like how to plans, uh, for making a Thanksgiving meal and the many steps, uh, multi-step plans uh, that go into preparing everything from the turkey and dressing to the pecan pie. I didn't want to talk too much about it because I know y'all are going to get hungry if I start doing that. 
But it's great to have someone these days, especially you can just turn on your phone or turn on your computer um, and be able to see step by step how to do Thanksgiving, for someone to show you how to do it. Well, that's what our scripture readings do for us this morning. Not to make the Thanksgiving meal, but they show us how to do Thanksgiving. What we hear from them is a two-step process of Thanksgiving. And there's, that's just it. I mean, it's really easy. Two steps. First of all, remembering where our blessings come from and then sharing them with others. The first step for Thanksgiving is found in our Deuteronomy passage. Whoops, I put the sheep and goats up there too fast. The first step for Thanksgiving is, is in Deuteronomy, as we heard that read earlier. Uh, and actually, on Wednesday night, we looked at this text a little bit and um, went through just what, what this meant and looked at some of the things that were, uh, were mentioned there. Uh, but these words are, are more words of caution than about a particular step. The danger for the Hebrew people was for them to move into the freedom of their release from slavery. If you remember, God heard their cries in Egypt and God sent Moses to uh, bring, them out, bring them up out of slavery. But... Uh, the, the problem was for them to realize, okay, we've been released, and then receive the blessings of God along the way, but then forget who provided it all for them. God was worried that they would forget. God knew that they would forget. So while enjoying the abundant wheat and barley, if you look back at this text, you'll see all the things that are mentioned there. The wheat and the barley, the figs, the pomegranates, the olive oil, the honey, the land that God was going to give them, the copper, and we looked at this specifically, that, um, that the mention there was of copper that was buried in the hills and in the mountains, that they could harvest that out of the mountain, they could mine it, and they could turn, those, turn the copper into tools and into weapons. But also, and the homes that they would receive. And the danger would be that they would start thinking they got this for themselves, rather than remembering that it was all from God, that God did every bit of it for them. And so they may start to forget about God and God's way for them to live in the world. The author of Deuteronomy warns them, saying this, Do not say to yourself, Do you all ever talk to yourselves? Okay, Do you, does yourself talk back? <laughs> Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. That sounds like pretty good advice, doesn't it? And yet, why is it that we all have so much trouble remembering who gave us what we have and how we got to where we are? What is it about getting blessings from God that often results in our forgetfulness? or maybe just our ingratitude. What is it about getting something that causes us to do that? Well, a look at what others have done with their blessings and at what we have or haven't done with them in our own lives, no doubt shows our tendency to cling to the blessings rather than to the blesser, right? To turn our possessions into our obsessions and to see them as our belongings rather than our offerings. What's great about having a day of thanksgiving is that it causes us to stop and to reflect, even if it's just for a day and in between football games, and to remember the source of all that we have. Even if it's just this one day this week, it's a good lesson for us to recognize and to remember who God is and what God has done for us. Well, it's not enough to just stop there. A lot of people 
will barely make it to that point. And they'll remember and they'll give thanks. Maybe they'll say a prayer before they eat their Thanksgiving meal, and that's kind of the end of it. But it has to go beyond that, right? It has to go beyond remembering. We are to do something else, as found in the parable from Jesus that we have heard this morning. And it it comes to us on this last day of the church year, known as the Reign of Christ, or Christ the King Sunday. This is the last Sunday of this church year. Next Sunday, we begin Advent, and we begin to move into the season of preparation for the birth of Christ. And so on this last Sunday of every year, we focus on the reign of Christ, that Christ is indeed our King. And we have this parable to look at. It is the parable of the sheep and the goats. They kind of look cute on there, don't they? Uh, But as we hear in the story, it, uh, it doesn't really end up that way. Well, we often hear this as a reminder to be like a sheep rather than a goat, right? None of us want to be in the goat section unless it's the greatest of all time, right? I know you think that every time I say goat. But it is about caring for the least of these in our community rather than ignoring their needs. And that's how we think about it, right? The least of these. I need to care for them. And if I do that, then I am going to end up with the sheep rather than the goats. But it is actually, this parable is actually more directed at nations than to individuals. What Jesus was saying was that God would judge the nations based on what they did or didn't do about justice. The topic of the parables that he has been sharing with them, the ones that we've heard in worship uh, these last several weeks, they've been about justice, haven't they? Jesus identified himself here in this parable as the Son of Man, the new way of being human, a new way of living in the world in a way that God wants us to live. This one, this Son of Man, would bring judgment on the nations for how they treated the most vulnerable within them. The judgment and failure that comes to nations is a certain consequence And Jesus talks about this, right? He he talks about what's getting ready to happen in Jerusalem because he can see it coming. And he knows that they have been going the wrong direction, going down the wrong pathway. It's not at all how God wanted them to go. In a few weeks, we're going to look at John the Baptist, and he says the same thing. He says, repent. If you don't repent, you're going to be in some big trouble. God's judgment is going to come upon our nation unless we repent is what he says. And also, we can see this in the history of nations uh, for disregarding their responsibility to care for people in need. So this parable informs us about the second step of thanksgiving. The first is remembering. The second is sharing. As part of this nation, we are to pay careful attention to these words about sheep and goats. We would do well to evaluate our own nation in light of what happens, in light of what separates the sheep from the goats. We need to pay attention to this. Care for the least of these in our nation, particularly those in these four groups. These are the ones mentioned here. These are the least of these. The poor, the sick, the immigrants, and the imprisoned. Those are four major categories that we ought to be paying attention to. So how do we rate right now in our nation with sharing God's blessing of justice with each of these? Not so well, right? In fact, we are clearly in the goat section. The increasing number of people living in poverty in our nation. I mentioned this last week the growing gap that is between the rich and the poor and the diminishing, disappearing middle class. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. If you look at the pandemic, you will see that the rich got even wealthier during the pandemic while everyone else got more poor and destitute. 
but also not just the number of people living in poverty, but the attempts at limiting health care for millions of Americans. The case that is before the Supreme Court right now that would essentially take about 20 million people's insurance away from them during a pandemic. Also, the brutal immigration policies and news of at least 600 children still not united with their parents. These are children that our nation separated from their parents at the border. And the last I heard, they still have not found their parents. They have not been able to reunite them, some even a couple of months old from their parents. And our rate of mass incarceration. We're, we're pretty good at that in Louisiana, right? We incarcerate all kinds of people. I think Oklahoma now has beat us out, that we're not number one in comparison with nations, not just states, but nations around the world. We have these high rates of mass incarceration. And so they put us, all these things that we neglect, put us in the GOAT category, according to Jesus. Realizing this ought to motivate us right now as a nation to repent and to change our ways to provide justice for these people, to do better in each one of these categories. As individuals in this nation, we are to hold our government and leaders responsible for taking care of the poor, the sick, the immigrants, and the imprisoned. That's what we're supposed to do by voting or by uh, making sure that we are doing all that we can do to have the right kind of legislation in place that would make sure these people are protected and that we are doing justice. As with Israelites, nations are to pass on the blessings of God to people in need. We get in trouble when we don't do that, right? When we hold on to the things that God has given us, we're to pass them on. This is justice. This is what Jesus did as he entered our world to show us a new way of living as humans. And how did Jesus do it? He was self-giving, was he not? Always giving himself away. Uh, It is also liberating that we are freeing people up from what binds them, whether it's sin or whether it's oppression or poverty or sickness or whatever it is, that we are a part of the liberation of people. And also that it would be nonviolent. Jesus, as a, a model for how we're to live in this world, certainly lived his life non-violently, even to the point of being hung upon a cross. We live like Jesus when we make ourselves aware of the needs that are around us, when we take stock of our blessings, and then when we get busy sharing them with others. That's what our nation must do. It's also what we are to do as its citizens and as a church. What we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays with meals and clothes is a great example of doing that. We also have many opportunities to share with Volunteers of America and in our other partnerships of focusing in on these needs. And that's what's wonderful about Volunteers of America is that It has always focused its attention as an organization on the least of these in in communities all across our nation. And it makes it to where we don't have to create something new. We just join in with people that are already meeting those needs, the least of these in our community. Well, when we do this kind of sharing, along with the first step of remembering, then we will be getting it right and doing thanksgiving as God desires. Like a satisfying feast, the product of our actions will be a blessing to the world, one where everyone belongs and gets what they need, one where we are no longer counted as goats, but sheep. Isn't that where we want to be, on the sheep side? Let us pray. 
Our God, we recognize the reign of Christ in our world. We give you thanks for Jesus and and how he came into this world to show us a new way, a better way. We thank you that we have someone very much in control. As we go into this week of Thanksgiving, may we remember May we stop in the midst of all the busyness and all the things that we have to do. And may we give thanks for the many blessings that you bring into our lives. And then may we also look out at others who may not have the same kind of blessings that we have. And may we share with them as you have intended. We give you thanks for your love, your forgiveness in your reconciliation of us through our Lord and Savior and King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bow for the offertory prayer. Now, in these moments of gratitude, we would offer you a portion of all which you have given to us, gracious God. We do so trusting that you will take them, multiplying them in your kingdom, so all might be blessed by your love, your peace, and your hope. Amen. Thank you, Renee, Bill, and Scooter. We had uh, quite an event uh, on Thursday as we celebrated Thanksgiving with our Highland Blessing uh, dinner giveaway. Uh, Of course, we do this every Tuesday and Thursday, but this past week it was a special meal. Uh, LaShawn and Yolanda um, cooked uh, a great Thanksgiving meal uh, with turkey and uh, dressing all of it and we served 350 of those meals Um, people just kept coming Uh, if you drove by you probably saw the cars and the people but also um, we were able to uh, as Highland Center Ministries give uh, 200 uh, Thanksgiving food boxes full of groceries and 200 frozen turkeys Uh, So there was a lot going on up here on Thursday. I have a little video of it, and I'm going to, I think, make that work now. You got the news out here on the... Woo-hoo! Bless. Thank you. Do the wave or something. (laughs) 
just a little bit about uh, what took place. We also have that video on uh, the Facebook page and uh, you can take a closer look at it and see there. But lots of people here, uh, the food boxes and turkeys were provided by First Baptist Church and uh, so it's just a great blessing uh, to be able to be a part of it and as mentioned in the, in the message, uh, to be able to share that blessing with other people. And uh, we will continue doing that. Now, this week, we're only going to do it on Tuesday. Uh, we will not have our cooks here on Thursday uh, and will not be serving the meal on Thursday. But Tuesday, we will definitely be serving the meal. And so if you'd like to come and help or know someone who could um, use a meal, then send them on over our way. Also, um, we have a few other things going on. December the 12th is going to be the Christmas shop, and I hear that this is going to go on all day rather than being just a half day as we normally do it. Uh, this year we're trying to spread that out and spread our shoppers out, so it will be a full day of shopping. And if you would like to uh, participate, you can go buy a brand new gift. Uh, it needs to be $20 or less. And we sell those gifts uh, for $5, so someone could have a brand new gift uh, that was $20 and buy it for $5 or less. So it's great to be able to see people in the community come and uh, be able to get their Christmas gifts. Sabra Hicks has a question. Uh, we have two also, one on Amazon and one on Walmart Okay, how do they get to the registries? Okay, so they're under Highland Christmas Shop, not Highland Center Ministries or anything. Okay, Highland Christmas Shop. So you can go on to Walmart or Amazon and put that in there, and uh, it will give you the directions. Or you can just go to the store and buy something and bring it up here, and uh, we will put it. We have a hiding place somewhere here in the building that not even I know. Uh, and, and things are locked away until December the 12th, until... Santa Claus shows up and harvests them out of the room. Amen. All right, and also, um, I mentioned last week, Volunteers of America has an easy way for you to buy gifts for people. If you go to their website, and you'll see again our link on our Facebook page, you can see caring gifts, and you can give these angels as gifts, and they will mail them for you. Just put in the address of the person, and however much you want to pay for the angel, it's a donation. There's no suggested price. It's just whatever your donation is. They will mail that to the person. And these are going pretty fast, so you need to, if you want to do this, go on there, and um, you can um, be able to sign up for one of those, or if you want to do a whole bunch of them. If you have a, 20 people that you want to buy gifts for, you can do all 20 and they'll make sure those are mailed out. So you don't even have to go to the, the uh, post office uh, to be able to do that. Also, first week of Advent is coming up uh, this next Sunday. And uh, so it's hard to believe. We will have our Advent candles out. And we will be lighting the first Sunday of Advent's candle. And that will move us into the Christmas season. Uh, this week, we will not have midweek on Wednesday but we will start up again with that in the, the next week as we begin uh, an Advent study. Um, I think that's all of the information. I, oh, and poinsettias, uh, we do have some of those available. The cards are out at the desk, and I think we're going to have that online as well, aren't we? 
Okay. Um, and you can uh, do that. We will decorate in here with all the poinsettias that are bought in memory or in honor of someone. And that's always a, a beautiful way for us to remember them and to honor them uh, during the Christmas season. Uh, I want to let you know, in case you were not aware, uh, and I had a, a slide, but I, I don't think I saved it to the right file. Um, Tony Venable uh, died this past week, and uh, Tony uh, and Juanita have been members of our church for a number of years, and um, Tony was not able to participate uh, very much because of uh, pain and, and just her ongoing illness. And uh, she died, uh, I believe, Wednesday evening, and uh, we learned about it uh, on Friday. There is an obituary listed on Ald's uh, funeral home. If you want to go there, you can see um, the uh, information that her obituary that is posted on there. And, um, and so as a, as a member of our, our church, we grieve her loss, but we also uh, remember Juanita and want to hold uh, Juanita in our prayers and in our sympathy, especially as we go into this season. Uh, because of the COVID-19, they are, are not, uh, Juanita is not uh, planning a, a service at this time, but if you would like to send a card or if you would like to take some food by, I think Ralph took some food by yesterday, if you would like to participate in that, you can uh, certainly do that. Um, and I believe uh, that is it as far as our uh, announcements for today. At this time, I want to invite you to stand with me. Also, it is great to see Wendell back there. Uh, Wendell is going to be moving uh, after the winter is over, uh, which could be like tomorrow, Wendell, if you're basing that on Louisiana. But he is going to move back to Delaware. Um, and um, so we, we um, are, are going to miss you, Wendell, but we're not going to say goodbye yet. Uh, we hope that we'll have that opportunity before you leave town. But it is so good to see you and to have you here with us. Uh, as we close in this time, we recognize God's presence with us. As you go from this place, may you go in the love of God the Father. May you go in the justice of Jesus the Son. And may you go in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen.